Hey, this is Christian Buckley with another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Gil. Hey, great to see you. Hey. Hi, Chris. Good to see you. So uh, people that don't know who you are, where you are, what you do, why don't you give us the backstory? That's a good idea. So I'm Jill. Uh, I live uh, in Belgium, um, a very small country, somewhere uh, in the middle of Europe. Some people think uh, Brussels is, this, is, the, is our country and Belgium is sometimes the capital. I sometimes hear people say that, but Belgium is the country. And, and I live close to Brussels. Um, I'm... Um, I've been uh, doing uh, Microsoft stuff for uh, nearly 20 years. Actually, it occurs to me that uh, I, I graduated, uh, uh, I think, 18 years ago. And it occurred to me over the weekend. So, uh, and I've never done anything else but, but .NET because I, I actually graduated and then uh, .NET was released. And I, right from my internship at, uh, at my first company, I started doing .NET and I have been uh, yeah, doing nothing well, but, uh, but yeah, .NET. You, since that then. was an early embrace. I mean, I know that it yeah. was... Uh, it was, you know, it, it, it's funny that they, I mean, that, that's been kind of a pattern where uh, there are a lot of Microsoft technologies. It's never what the kids, you know, are interested in focusing on. Every, every few years, especially you get this within the, the DevOps space, and I've worked in, you know, years, years ago, um, where I, I would work with a couple of universities, local universities, and get that question of, you know, what would be your recommendation? Somebody that's going into yeah. computer science, going into engineering. Yeah which is not my background, but I've worked in tech my entire career. Yeah. Um, and, and so I would talk about some of these Microsoft technologies and some of these more operational technologies mm -hmm. and they kind of make faces like, uh, uh, yeah, like I, I want to go work. I must say I was, <laughs> I also was, uh, yeah, like you say, I was an early adopter, I think. Um, uh, it was kind of a funny story because there was, there was someone from Microsoft here in Belgium who uh, who came to to uh, I think it was I think it was in the last year of university and 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 they came and did a presentation uh, and I was already doing some some .dot net in 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 my spare time building like a, a web shop for uh, for uh, the local computer uh, store and stuff and I, I had a chat with him and uh, then basically that that's how I also got my internship at a at a company uh, that that also built yeah, at the time it was web portals that we were building. And so that then I, I basically started my first job there at 2001, 2002, mm -hmm. which was yeah, a difficult time also to find a job because uh, all the all the dot-com stuff had, had just uh, happened. 9-11 uh, was not that long ago. And so, yeah, I got lucky and I, yeah, I, I got launched in the Microsoft space and um, yeah, the rest is history, I think. So yeah, I was indeed uh, pretty early in that. So I, st I still have somewhere in, in my office here the, 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 the alpha CDs of uh, .NET Alpha. So uh, yeah. I still have them somewhere. I, I, I don't know where I got them. Some, some, some mm -hmm. Microsoft tech days, I think. And uh, yeah. yeah. You know, one of the things I have to say, I, one, uh, so I, I was at Microsoft for three and a half years, but then mm -hmm. for a handful of years, I, so I lived in the Seattle area. I had an office on campus as part of the Microsoft Partner Solution Center in Building 25. Yeah. So I think three or four years that we had an office there. Uh, and one of the things that I loved doing, <clears throat> looking around as both an employee and then as a partner with access to campus, um, was you know people would clear out their offices and mm -hmm. purge like old books and oh, yeah. old sets of discs, <laughs> and they just throw them in the in the like the the cafe area and allow anybody to come take them. And as a yeah. joke, we used to run, I used to run Sherman Saturday events on campus there and, and other community stuff. I would go grab these obscure old, when I say old, like early 90s technology, dense, you know, Bible-esque books yeah. of some obscure technology, now defunct technology. And then would, we would give them away as raffle items yeah. for the Did user groups. Do you remember that, that Microsoft at, at some point had the MSDN library in books, yeah. eh? Uh -huh. That I, I had it for like a seven seven part book or something, a, a, a seven part, part series or something. But that, that I actually bought it at some point. Imagine imagine printing that now. That's uh, that's amazing. So. Well, I, I know it's uh, I know well. I'm I'm old school that way. I still prefer to read uh, the printed word over digital. Mm -hmm. 
for mm -hmm. for books, but you know certainly there are some things like uh, you know digital guides, desktop guides. I think of like Tony uh, uh, Redmond's uh, guide for uh, you know Office three sixty five. Like you want that in a digital format because. Mm -hmm constant updates you're constantly it's a yeah, reference yeah, yeah. reference series but you know, let me ask you so because you're very involved in the community um yes. so you you're part of the the local user groups and running those and been involved and been uh, you're you're speaking uh, uh your, your sessions or topics do a range from more uh, uh you know the the deeper development topics to more beginner 101 topics yeah. um so kind of going back to what we were talking about, about getting into breaking into the field. I mean, do you see a lot of young people kind of entering this space now that are looking around the Microsoft ecosystem, or is it still kind of the older crowd that has spent a few years in, you know, in the enterprise and realize, yeah. Hey, this is a lot of the technology that's actually making companies run. Yeah. I, I, I would suggest the, the second option, sadly, but sadly, but true. It's, it's uh, indeed, I, I, I run the user group here in Belgium uh, together with my wife, which is fun because she's also in IT uh, and, and a colleague of mine that also I started a company with. And um, so, yeah, that's exactly what we see. We, it's, you see fresh faces, but yeah, not enough. Let's say it's, it's, it, it's difficult. I, and, and it's also, Part of the problem, uh, at least uh, here in Belgium, where uh, universities uh, they often default to Java, mm. uh, and and yeah, that's basically not a good place uh, for for uh, another good starting point. Let's say for uh, uh, new people that are entering the field to yeah, then make the jump into Microsoft and uh, the Microsoft ecosystem. That there are, uh, like I said, it's it's not all bad, of course. Eh? There there are. There are people uh, that are looking uh, in, uh, for jobs in, in, in our space, but um, yeah, it. what also strikes me sometimes is, is, is I don't see a lot of new people uh, going on a stage and, and, and starting to share the knowledge. It's not, not only that we don't, uh, we will reach new people, I'm, I'm, I'm sure about that, but it's, I, I don't see a lot of, when I, when I started speaking, it, it was really a competition here, a, a, a good competition in, 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 a, in a good way, but you, you, you were actually uh, talking with other people here in the community, hey, I found some, some conference there, let's, let's, let's go there and let's, let's uh, uh, try to speak there. And, and yeah, you don't see a lot of people at this point doing that. It's maybe, like you say, maybe we're getting old and yeah, that was a bit dark time, I don't know. But it's, yeah, it's, it's, um, that it's different than, than 15, 20 years ago. So uh, well, yeah. well, certainly. I mean, I you know, well, it, it's 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 hard to uh, keep the perspective of things now since we're all you know working remotely and doing a lot more yeah. online. And certainly, yeah. it's a lot easier for uh, for anybody to go and use a free or or inexpensive tool and run a webinar and kind of share yeah. their their learning. Um, what would be your your advice to to people that that are that have been working with the technology and are interested in kind of building up their profile as a as a speaker as an expert you know in the field well that, that's that is something that i that i often talk to people about that i i run my own company now and and one of our goals uh, within our company is is actually getting people involved in the community and getting them to share knowledge and and that's exactly my advice sharing knowledge is actually is also learning it yourself because the more you actually want to share it 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 pushes you to to go further to explore something further and and yeah it's it's in my opinion the best way to to learn something and and sharing is sharing knowledge is i think still the best thing that you can do because uh, well, everything that you know is something that that someone else probably doesn't know or maybe he does know or she does know but yeah you, you will help someone with it and that that should still be the driver i think to 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 start going on a stage to to go to user groups and 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 present there and 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 write articles and it takes time it takes time and uh, yeah it's it it takes the time also to to build up your reputation um why also yeah you have to do it out of a passion uh, I, i've always uh, yeah, I, I got lots. I, I became MVP. I became RD uh, a long time ago. So it's it. I, I, I yeah. I, I've been lucky, and I also wanted to to give back to the community. Uh, and I think yeah, doing those presentations, doing it all in your own time is is part of that. I think.
Yeah, it's, um, I, I think we, of course, individuals, we can be our own uh, biggest, you know, our own worst critics. And, yeah. uh, and we stop ourselves from going and trying new things and doing new things. And writing is difficult for a lot of people. And uh, mm -hmm. one thing you have to be careful of um, is not to look at the fact that, uh, let's say you and I were doing the same similar roles in the same field, and we do very different things. But, mm -hmm. you know, for this example, and and I saw this great blog post, an example that you gave of something that I've really been wanting to write about that I've got experience for my company. Just because somebody else has written another article that's, that's you know, in parallel to your experience, mm -hmm. they have different backgrounds, uh, likely different industry, uh, you know, yeah. different personal experiences around that. It's still valid to go and write up and share yeah you know, that, that best practice or that learning, yeah. whatever it is. And then the other thing I would invite kind of along those lines is don't think that it has to be whatever solution you came up with, that it has to be perfect. I, um, I think, and, and that is indeed true because some people think, well, I'm, I'm not good enough and they're going to ask me, me difficult questions. And I'm always like, if, if, if someone asks you a question, they're not there to, to bully you. They're not there to, to make you look bad. They are there to learn. Uh, and if you don't know it, well, uh, follow up with them, uh, try to help them. And, and, and it's not, uh, like you say also, that it's not because something already exists that you cannot also write or talk about the same. We're not competitors. We are basically here to, to, to help the community move forward. Yeah. yeah, I think that there's a skillful way definitely to respond to those kinds of questions where you don't know. And it's, yeah. you know, we, we joke in the Microsoft ecosystem when you, you know, with Microsoft people, I think that they well, shoot your mail. Well, you know, well that, but they, they say, well, that, that's a, uh, that's really good feedback. That's uh, an interesting question. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's part of, uh, I, I don't recall, I might've skipped that as part of the, uh, the new employee introduction, the Neo program, but I'm pretty sure that they train new employees with the oh, vocabulary definitely. to respond yeah. to that stuff. <laughs> but it's also for, for, for just community speakers and, and, and uh, uh, if you're a trainer also, I also say to people the first time that you teach a class, it's also the same thing. You, you will not know everything. And again, people are not sitting there listening to you three, four, five days to, to see you fail. They are there to learn. And if you don't know something, yeah, try to figure it out together yeah. with them, follow up with them. There, uh, De definitely don't learn. fake it. Don't don't try yeah, to no, you definitely. know and be very clear. Be like you know I don't know here. In, yeah. it, it, there's it's one thing to to kind of go through and say well logically this is how and I and I often use the phrase like well this is the the behavior I would expect mm -hmm. but like we're doing um, we're doing uh, weekly office hours now and so we get questions where there's four or five of us sitting there and we're like you know everybody's kind of you know I'm not sure this is the way that. I've had experience with this part of it. Yeah. I'm not sure how that works. And sometimes one of us will jump on and go and look it up and see if we can find somebody that's written yeah. about it or, or actually yeah. go into the admin panel to, to, to look and see how it responds. But um, yeah, there's nothing wrong with not knowing the answer. It's, it's better to admit that up front and say, yeah. but, and then follow up. Yeah. And that's, but that's it's, a it's great sometimes... opportunity, you know? Yeah, you learn as well. Eh? You, you, right. are, you, are, you are benefiting from this as well. And it is sometimes in, in, in the community, sometimes also that people think oh, you're an MVP, you know everything. And I'm like, no, I, it, it doesn't have anything to do with that really. So it's, it's sometimes a misconception that, that the program has, but yeah, that's... Right. Yeah. Well, and I always say this, like, look, no, nobody knows everything about the technology. Nope. There's, I mean, yep. the reality is that there's product team, the Microsoft people, there are community people that they'll reach out to to answer questions about their own technology that they own yeah. that they're building on. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah To get those there's, different there's no perspectives. Shame in that. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah there's definitely no shame, but it is something that that is a bit of a barrier for people to, to I think, uh, before they actually step on the stage, some mindset that they have to go through, and yeah, it takes time, and some people yeah, can actually do it, and yeah. Well, that's another, probably. it's another great uh, uh, kind of push towards community and for the user group. And, and certainly, I mean, our membership in the RD and MVP programs, um, you don't have to be an MVP or RD to be able to leverage those two networks. Mm -hmm. So get to know, you know, yeah. introduce yourself to it. I, I would argue that the vast majority of RDs and MVPs are some of the most community oriented people, which is why they get those designations. Yeah. 
And so if you have questions to not be shy to reach out to those individuals, there's, you know, the only dumb question is the question not asked. Yeah, that, that too, eh? that, that is, there's also, uh, that, that's the other side of things. Eh? I live in Belgium and but yeah, Belgians are pretty shy people uh, and, and it's, it's always difficult here because uh, I, I run a conference, uh, uh, maybe you've heard of it, Techorama is uh, yep. quite a big conference. Yep. And so, uh, yeah, in the beginning when we had US speakers coming over, uh, uh, it's typical in the US that people make their sessions a bit shorter for a Q&A session. Uh, or Q&A part of the session. Yep. And uh, in Belgium, you get zero questions. Maybe after the session, they'll come forward and ask you a question, but right. it's very rare. And and so in the beginning, some speakers were like panicking. Whoa, I, 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 I missed my, my, I have only 40 minutes or 50 minutes and I had to fill an hour. Sorry, I, I, I didn't know. I'm like, yeah, yeah. The well, Belgians also are the same. They, they didn't ask questions. So they're shy in, in that area or in that direction too. So, well, that's why it's always good, I think, with any topic uh, that you go and present on. This is just kind of uh, you know my my best practice is have three or four questions that you've been asked previously. So be ready for that non-response. Sometimes yeah. it's and sometimes when you say here's a common question that I hear, and then go yeah. in and give an explanation for that, and you'll see a bunch of heads nodding and stuff after that. But yeah. once you yeah. do that a couple times. That tends to then you get a hand go up with the question. Um, yeah, it, sometimes it works, and and there are there are speakers that that have a, a natural talent to actually get people to 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 talk. I've I've seen I've, uh, I've seen sessions here where where people actually are jumping on their seat almost, but yeah. it's it's rare. In 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 general, yeah, it's it's a cultural thing here, and and it's it's sometimes hard to get people to ask questions. And like you say, the 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 only question not asked is a that's a dumb question. Eh? So because yeah. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Well, I, I say that then being an American and being you know, loud and and uh, talking a lot, <laughs> um, there are a lot of people like me at events, and, uh, um, and and I I would say that I have run into some dumb questions that were asked out loud, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know, but then again, this, yeah, it's, that, it's, yeah. but I always, I welcome those. It gives the room a good laugh. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, indeed. Well, tell me, tell me about your, your company and more about what your company does. Yeah. So, um, I run, uh, Xperit here in Belgium. Uh, so, uh, Xperit is a high level consultancy, uh, company that, uh, originates in the Netherlands. So, uh, Netherlands has been around for now close to six years. And so me and another uh, colleague here, um, so basically the same person I have been running the user group with, uh, for, uh, 12, 13 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we joined forces, uh, in a, in a company as well. And so uh, Xperit does, uh, so like I said, high-level consultancy, so architecture, um, um, DevOps uh, consultancy. So we do typically short-term assignments, uh, helping customers, coaching teams. Um, and yeah, we, we're not a big company in, in terms of we're in Belgium. We're uh, uh, under 10 people at this point. So yeah, we only started, uh, yeah. On a one and a half year ago, uh, but we focus mostly on on yeah on shorter term assignments that that uh, help customers make a big jump into cloud into new architectures that uh, yeah, that are beneficial for them. Yeah, that it's been uh, it, it's interesting. So I've done uh, so my my company um, so my little company you know me and I have part time employees and of course contractors that I've worked with, uh, but mm-hmm. we do uh, research as part of what we do and I partner with yeah. local, local universities. And we did a study three years ago. Uh, first one we did, so Microsoft is the primary sponsor of that, but a num- about a dozen different um, uh, you know, ISDs and SIs within the Microsoft ecosystem that co-sponsored around on-prem uh, environments. Mm-hmm. And while we were focused on SharePoint, it was you know some interesting data points about um, you know the move towards the cloud. What was interesting to me personally is that I joined a startup and not a Microsoft technology company, but back in 2001, January of 2001, um, where we built a, uh, a cloud-based collaboration platform. And as I was uh, ran the deployment team, and we did deployments all around Asia Pacific and across the US and, uh, well, North America, so Canada and the US, um, you know, we saw tremendous resistance back in 2001, 2002, moving from on-prem to mm-hmm. cloud environments. And it was, you know, SAS was a new acronym that, that yeah. not everybody was familiar with yet. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. There were very few enterprise scale solutions, SaaS solutions out there in the late 90s, early 2000s. And uh, with all of that, um, I, I'm still, I don't see it quite as much, but there are, is still some resistance um, yeah. of companies Definitely. moving towards the cloud. I mean, are you still seeing that in, in, with your customers? Yeah, we are still seeing it. Although, like you say, it's, it's gone down. It's gone down. And again, it's uh, because we work together a lot with, with our colleagues in the Netherlands. Um, it's also a cultural thing. Um, mm -hmm. And again, I will refer to Belgians as being very conservative. Uh, in terms of, of technology as well. Uh, uh, Belgian is often like, oh, it works, let's let's keep it this way because I know this and, and let's keep it this way. Yep. Whereas I see in the Netherlands, customers are, are yeah, they, 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 yeah they're, they're more engaging in towards newer, uh, newer technology. They, they, they don't want to keep things like they are. Whereas in Belgium, it's, it's, it's very different. It's, it's sometimes hard to... Uh, to to understand that there's such a big difference with two tiny countries next to each other, and uh, there's such a cultural difference that that sometimes in people's minds uh, here in Belgium it's sometimes difficult to yeah to convince them. And of course that's not for every customer, but yeah we still see where customers where it's hard. Although yeah we focus mostly now on these type of transitions, so we typically come in. Uh, and we talk with with the, the management team to, to to show also the benefits and stuff. And yeah, lately it's it seems to be going more smoothly than before. I think um, it's it's more easing in at this point. It's well, I imagine with if somebody is coming to a company like yours, looking for this help, that they've they're moving down that path already. They uh, typically have already done the decision maybe not not always definitely yeah. not um, well, there's, there's but, always those examples of like a you know a cio has made the decision and yet yeah. others on the executive team are against it and there's pushback there and, yeah yeah um, it's 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 like you say and and, and we are typically more uh, we we also also help the c level people make this type of decisions uh that's that's part of what we do but we also in in general also come in to to help the actual doing of the technique of the of the, the 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 transformation and and you know sometimes the decision has already been made but it's yeah, like you say it's 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 different uh, depending on customer to customer you know what kind of issues do you see that are uh, you know organizations that are resistant to move entirely over or that are struggling with that are there mm -hmm. do you see any trends of inf you know of, of what's keeping them from just moving towards the cloud in the past when I was still doing consultancy at another company, we uh, sometimes had issues where companies were uh, willing to keep the data within the, the, the national, uh, into the borders of yeah. Belgium. Mm -hmm. um, we did some customers uh, for um, so, so government more, uh, government related, and that definitely yeah. was um, a typical example of, of it, it having to be within yeah. data centers in Belgium. Oh, and, yeah. and of course, also with the GDPR stuff, you also see some some things there that that um, initially, like two, uh, when it when it started, was like two years ago, that also gave some some customers more uh, doubts about should we do this or not. Yeah, those right. were the typical the privacy related stuff and the, the sensitive data uh, oriented things. Those were the typical things we we ran into. Yeah, we hear a lot of that. Uh, you know, here in the U.S. especially about you know the German marketplace and a lot that Microsoft has done specifically. Mm -hmm. I think I think even before GDPR. Um, they had one of the globally one of the strictest, um, you know, yeah. uh, uh, set of regulations around um, data sovereignty. Um, you know, not really heard. I, I, I don't honestly. I don't know about the rest of you know it's, uh, it's northern and then. western Europe. You know, yeah. as, as strict or or. It, yeah, I think also that also depends on the country, and and yeah, some things are regulated on a on a EU level. Some things are more regulated on a on a country on a national level. So it it really depends on the type of project. So it's yeah, it's like you say in the US, you probably don't run into those type of issues that often. Eh? It's it's one huge country, so I assume it's it's yeah, at least different uh, type of of issues. Eh? Well, I think even now, I think more and more companies. Uh, even if they don't have physical locations in other countries, mm -hmm. it's becoming more and more commonplace for, you know, predominantly U.S. companies to have international employees. And yeah. so some of these these issues come into play. 
I know yeah. there's, some, there's some questions around that. I've run into that. I mean, I spent a, a chunk of my career working with uh, companies, uh, you know, a handful in Europe, but mostly uh, across uh, Asia Pacific. And, uh, you know, so these kinds of issues are the same things that we heard about, you know, 25 yeah. years ago. Yeah, it's that, that's indeed the same thing. Like I say, it's, it's, it's not new issues. It's typically the same things that still bubble up every now and then. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's fascinating. Yeah. Well, so, so Joel, people want to find out more about you, get in touch with you. What are the best ways that they can reach you? Oh, uh, I'm typically quite active on Twitter. Uh, so that's uh, just Jill Kleren on Twitter uh, or via the company, experience.com slash Jill will also get them uh, to, to, to my profile and they can reach out to me anytime. Excellent. And as I mentioned, you know, uh, you know most MVPs and RDs, like we welcome the, the questions and people reaching out. Yeah. Um, so you don't have to already be connected on LinkedIn. Reach out. No, no. Um, I get, no, that's true. That's true. Indeed. Yeah. Just, well, excellent. just reach out. Yeah. Well, hey, well, I, we won't get to see you uh, uh, at the next summit since uh, we're, we're going to be virtual. <laughs> yep. Again, next, virtual. next spring. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, hopefully I'll, I'll see you uh, soon enough. I'll be back over. I'll definitely, you know, summer of 2021 and fall, I've got events that I'll be back over your way. So hopefully we'll get to meet up in person. Always welcome at Techorama as well. So, uh, well, thanks. Yeah. When, yeah, when does that event run? When's the next one? So the, we were supposed to have the one in Belgium in uh, May and the next one would be in October in the Netherlands. But yeah, we are uh, skipping 2020 and we're yeah. now looking at 2021. So we're, uh, it's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen. But we are, we have, last week we actually started uh, the planning phase of 2021, which is special. It's yeah. uh, not a normal planning phase this time, but uh, yeah, we're looking at what we can do. So um, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the dates are already fixed. It's going to be again May and, and October. Okay. Probably. Well, excellent. Uh, yeah. Well, that was uh, you know, I was it was supposed to be over there three times this fall, just this fall, and yeah. uh, so I'm I'm sad to not get to go over. It's uh, visit some of the uh, most beautiful cities in the world that I've uh, visited. I'm just uh, excited yeah. to get back over, but uh, it'll be another year. Yeah. Hungering that's, down. that's cross our fingers. That's cross that's our right. fingers. Yeah. Right. Well, thanks a lot. It was great talking to you. Great talking to you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.